talks will be about the compliance with the 5 plus 1 group because the group didn't fulfill its obligations, especially after the US withdrawal from the deal. The talks are about returning to commitments, and today we are in such a position that taking into account our capabilities, we will never accept the previous method of negotiations. Now, the talks should be totally practical, we should verify the removal of sanctions, assure they are fulfilling their obligations, and it's not one-sided like last time. William Lawrence joins us now from Washington, D.C. He's a former U.S. diplomat and professor of political science and international affairs at the American University. So it's always a pleasure seeing you. Uh, firstly, what are your expectations for these talks? Do you see any compromise in the future? Not really. All indications are that the new Iranian government, which is more hardline than the previous Iranian government, and this is the first time, this is the seventh round of negotiations, but the first time they'll be engaging, uh, it's trying to reset the rules even more in their favor than before. And those six rounds, of course, led to no deal. Um, the uh, negotiations are still indirect. The U.S. sits in the hotel room nearby. Uh, and all the leading experts are saying that the team is going, that's going to Vienna won't really have the ability to make concessions really at all. So uh, there's a hope among some analysts that there will be some back-channel negotiations between the U.S. and Iran and maybe in some other setting like Oman or, um, or some other method. But uh, uh, the, the various formulas we've been imagining, either uh, less than the old deal or same as the old deal or a little more than the old deal to get the two sides together, uh, we're, we're mostly pessimistic about that coming out of this round. You know, the head of U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth McKenzie, when interviewed recently, said, Wednesday, that was, that Iran is, quote, very close to producing enough enriched uranium to create a nuclear weapon. Do you get the impression that Iran is actually interested in building one, or is enrichment just leverage at this point? Absolutely. And when they look at North Korea and other countries, they believe that they actually have more leverage to uh, negotiate once they have a nuclear weapon or when they're close to a nuclear weapon. The breakdown, the breakout time to a nuclear weapon used to be estimated about a year. Now it's estimated at weeks. Uh, and as Robert Malley said in his recent interview, uh, the, 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 there's no really indication here that uh, uh, Iran is serious about making concessions and that they're they're really going to not build a weapon. So I think the point of the negotiations is to stop them from building a weapon. If they can reach a weapon in a very short period, there's no point in going forward. They've increased enrichment from 4%, which was the limit, 3.67%, up to 60%. They don't need much more enrichment. They've been uh, building centrifuges. Of course, it was the United States that left the agreement uh, formally, but Iran, one year later, left the agreement practically. And they've basically moved forward as if there was no agreement. And we're sort of at the end game here. If there isn't an agreement soon, then Iran will be on the verge of having a nuclear weapon, which was the point of the agreement in the first place. Professor William Lawrence of American University, once again, thank you.